Hey there. So we talked a lot about limits, uh, so we're ready to start talking about derivatives now. Um, and before we do that, uh, we're going to talk about average rates of change. So this is pretty much going to lead into derivatives uh, through limits. So here we have our function uh, y equals f of x. Uh, we have a graph like this. Here's x equals a, x equals b. Uh, this is the point a comma f of a. Here's b comma f of b. And uh, this green line here, we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, anyway, the average rate of change of f of x on the interval, the closed interval, a to b, is defined to be uh, AROC for average rate of change equals f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. All right. So notice what this is, uh, f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. That's uh, the change in y divided by the change in x. So that's the slope of this green line, uh, and this green line is called the secant line. So the average rate of change of a function on an interval a to b is actually the slope of the secant line uh, through those two points, uh, a comma f of a and b comma f of b. So that's really important to remember, uh, is that the average rate of change of a function on an interval is the slope of the secant line that goes through the endpoints of that interval. All right? So that's the general definition there. So let's see an example here. Um, example one. Find the average rate of change of f of x equals x squared from x equals negative 1 to x equals 3. So it's pretty much just a straightforward application uh, of this definition here. So the average rate of change, AROC for short, equals um, f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So we just need to identify what's a and what's b. Well, we're going from x equals negative 1 to x equals 3, so that means we're on the interval negative 1, comma, 3. So here's our a, okay, it's negative 1, and here's b, it's 3. So this uh, average rate of change equals f of 3 minus f of negative 1, all divided by b minus a, which is 3 minus negative 1. All right, so now we just have to know uh, what's f of 3 and what's f of negative 1. Well, we go back up to our function here, f of x, uh, it's x squared. All right, so f of 3 is going to be 3 squared. So let's come off to the side uh, and write that down here. f of 3 equals 3 squared, which is 9. All right, and we also need f of negative 1. f of negative 1 is negative 1 squared, which is just positive 1. All right, so going back to our calculation here, uh, this is going to equal f of 3 we know is 9, so this is 9 minus uh, f of negative 1 is positive 1, so this is 9 uh, minus 1, all divided by what's on the bottom. 3 minus negative 1 is 3 plus 1, which is 4. All right. So 9 minus 1 is 8, and 8 divided by 4 is 2. So the answer to this is 2. So what does that really mean? Uh, what this means is that uh, for this function f of x equals x squared here, as x moves from negative 1 to 3, uh, on average, the y values increase by 2, on average. So that's why it's called an average rate of change. Um, and again, this uh, value 2, that's equal to the slope of the secant line that goes through the points negative 1 comma 9 or excuse me uh, negative 1 comma 1 and 3 comma 9 so let's just see a graph of that real quick so let's erase all this work here uh, and just real quick we'll bring up a graph so we got our x-axis our y-axis here and uh, x squared kinda sorta looks something like that parabola so negative 1 uh, is over here, we'll just say it's over here, negative 1. So this will be 1, 2, 3. Very badly drawn, not really to scale, but uh, that's okay, I guess. So here's negative 1, here's 3. So uh, this is the secant line that goes through these two points here. So this is negative 1, comma 1, and this is 3, comma 9. All right. So uh, from the work we found, we found that the average rate of change of f of x equals x squared from x equals negative 1 to x equals 3, we found that the average rate of change is uh, 2. So that means the slope of the secant line is equal to 2.